So it is my pleasure. Please join me in welcoming Ivan J. Houston to the UCLA Library. The black warriors, the Buffalo Soldiers of World War II. I see a lot of uh, people that I've never met before here in the audience. I see some of the old Buffalo Soldiers here and thank you so very much. Uh, you started our legacy and thank you for coming out uh, to sh share this moment with a World War II Buffalo Soldier. August 23rd, 1944, that my unit, my regiment, my combat team entered battle in Italy at the Arno River, which flows between Pisa and its Leaning Tower and the Renaissance city of Florence. Uh, yeah, I had, I was a private, then I was a PFC, then I was a corporal during much of the fighting. I was not an officer, but I was involved in maintaining the battalion journal, me and a few other guys. And we maintained this journal, which was an hour by hour, day by day. It actually ran up to almost 400 pages uh, during the time that we were in battle. And it documented everything, but in military jargon. This journal, I was able to uh, rescue when I got out of the army. I shouldn't really have it. There is a, thank you. This is, I should not have this journal. It, we wrote it every day, every call that came in, every uh, messenger that came to battalion and headquarters. It was gathering dust in my closet. And then I said about three or four years ago, I said, I've got to do something about this. And so uh, I began to type one of the best things I ever learned in the eighth grade, <laughs> typing. And I, I began to use my computer, one of the greatest inventions that ever came along, and I began to put in order this and book. We left for combat in Italy. My unit, it fought along other U.S. troops, including Japanese Americans, soldiers from Great Britain, Brazil, South Africa, and India. The Arno River Line. One week later, we crossed the Arno River Line and began to go north toward the famed Gothic Line that the Germans had built almost over the past year. We, the pack, the crossing of the Arno River and the invasion of the northern part of Italy by our division was a spectacular event because it just showed what people felt when they are freed. Because as, at a hamlet just north of the Arno, the citizens greeted us with cries of Viva Americani, Buongiorno, and other phrases that were beyond our limited vocabulary. <laughs> Others just waved happily. Some of the women could be seen crying. The excited civilians during, clung to our vehicles and showered the soldiers with grapes, flowers, and fruit. Some ran along pouring wine for all who would accept it, while others of both sexes and all ages paid their tribute with hearty kisses. They had every guy in the column feeling like a conquering hero. Even today, I smile and feel good when I recall these scenes. Here were white Italians greeting Negro Americans as liberators and showering us with love, while in our own country, we remain second class in all respects. This is the feeling we got as we moved across the Arno River into those small villages in northern Italy, in Tuscany. one of the most famous places in the world. 
Pisa, Luca, Florence. This is where we were. And it was really pretty well destroyed. The Germans did a lot of destruction, and I guess we did the rest of it. But uh, that, was, that was war. We did not have to dig trenches in Tuscany. Uh, we stayed in houses and in villas. That, and the Germans would shell the villas, and we would shell the villas. So in the end, a lot of the villas turned into rubble. But that's just the way World War II was in the Italy. The war ended in Italy on May the 2nd, 1945, almost a week earlier. It was a wild celebration. We, were in a, we had occupied a small town prone Tremoli in the very northern part of Tuscany. And the Italians, you know, went crazy. They were shooting all over the place, drinking wine. They wanted all, we were in a, right on a headquarters overlooking a, a piazza. And they wanted our colonel to come out and, uh, you know, greet him because he was the highest ranking person in the, this city. And he was very reluctant to do that because he thought he might get shot. <laughs> well, he, Colonel Doggett was a real deep southerner. He was from the two, <laughs> anyway. But he finally went out. I gave him a wonderful cheer. Didn't shoot him or anything. And, <laughs> and uh, he went back in. But uh, the other thing which we're quite proud of is the fact that on June 6, 1945, uh, no, it was not June 6th. It was actually earlier. On the men, the men of the 370th Regimental Combat Team had the honor of escorting the ashes of Christopher Columbus back to Genoa from where they had been hidden by the partisans during the war. <laughs> the men of Company H of the 370th Infantry Regiment accompanied the ornamental urn which rested on a horse-drawn carriage into the Piazza della Vittoria, largest square in Genoa. Commanded by Captain Harold Montgomery, the men of Company H, one of the, re the regiment's heavy weapons companies, walked at a funeral cadence in a manner that I have seen only Negro troops perform. It was a very, very solemn ceremony. Now, some of you may say, wait a minute, I think I saw Columbus's ashes in Seville <laughs> or in, uh, you know, the Dominican Republic. <laughs> yeah, I later learned that no one is really certain <laughs> whether or not those were truly Columbus ashes. <laughs> His remains have been variously reported to be in Seville, Spain, Havana, Cuba, and in the Dominican Republic. However, the ceremony certainly was stirring, and it was, <laughs> and, and it was quite an honor to those of us who had fought for such a long time under a great cloud of alleged incompetence. What, um, what we're seeing here is the... Uh, there is a military cemetery in Florence, Italy, just seven miles south of Florence. I was telling someone. And uh, it's, there are about four over, little over 4,000 graves. And there are about 400 uh, buffalo soldiers buried in that uh, cemetery. The uh, still, still left there, a lot of people were, uh, a lot of those who were killed in action were return, returned to the state. But there are still almost 400 there in this cemetery. It's a beautiful cemetery. Uh, in the back of the cemetery, nobody, very few people go to that cemetery. Hey, and even when you go there, if you just look at it from the entrance, you'll see a lot of crosses and so forth. But you will miss what is most spectacular. In the very back of the cemetery, there's a huge mural showing all the fighting in, in Italy, uh, in northern Italy. And it's in mosaic tile and marble, the only way that the Italians could do it. <laughs> and and, and the, beside that, there's a huge buffalo. Uh, all of the insignias of the army 
are uh, of those of us who fought in northern Italy are there. And uh, there's, in, you can't, it doesn't do it justice there, over there, and there's a picture over there where it's in gold and black mosaic tile. I'm pointing to it in that picture. And uh, it's, uh, it's beautiful. And it's with the, our division, the 1st Armored Division, which is the same 1st Armored Division that's been fighting in the desert wars, that division was the, when we first went online in August 1944, we replaced the 1st Armored Division in line on the Arno River. And uh, their insignia is there too. But it's a beautiful place. If you're ever in Florence, Italy, if you can persuade, well, it costs you a mint to get one of those taxi drivers <laughs> to get you seven miles, uh, you know, down to the U.S. military cemetery there. And uh, it is a, uh, it's a very beautiful uh, spot. And uh, it's the only place in the world where I've ever seen the uh, buffalo insignia uh, so presented. Uh, there are other things that over there on the, uh, I've discovered when I was doing the, the book, uh, Google. Yeah, I'm, you know, I'm a, I'm a little old to read Google, you know, here's Google. And I, but with Google, I was able to actually go to the front line. I was actually able to see where we fought. It's a, it's just amazing to me to be able to zoom in like you're in a helicopter, and yeah, that's one place where, that's Serovetsa, where, you know, we had everything, you know, where we were almost blown up. That's Hill X, where we lost two dozen men.